January 2014. It was a frozen night. The snow had just began to sink its teeth into the ground, and the moon, the moon was the dim lamp for my west side neighborhood. I laced up my Tims, threw on a hoodie, topped it off with a coat that slapped boxes with the wind to keep Chicago's cold out of my bones, went out my back door, and waited in the alley for a friend to pick me up for dinner and conversation. And as I sat there, I saw a police car ride past the main street to make an abrupt stop as if he saw a man with skin the color of criminal. The squad car swiftly made a U-turn that resembled a tornado and rushed down the alley in my direction like a hurricane picking up speed in debris. And as they approached me, four deep, barely hitting me with the car, the officer driving said, hey, what's your name? I replied with calm, stitched in my tone. My name is Preston. Where do you live, Preston? I live right there. Where is there? In that building right there, you a liar. Why are you in the alley? I'm waiting for a friend to pick me up. You're a liar. What's your address, sir? Is there a problem? Like, why am I being interrogated? Shut your mouth and put your hands on the car. The four of them jumped out the car on cue, rushed my body like a SWAT team, invading the dope house with a warrant that didn't exist, cuffed me as if they knew I was guilty of something and told me if I moved, I would be shot. Dear Mike Brown, I don't know you. I don't know if your unarmed body rose from his bed that morning planning to stick his hands in a squad car. I don't know if you were the aggressor on the hunt or prey fighting for survival. Don't know if you were a thug from St. Louis or just another brown boy from America scrutinized as suspect by the media. But what I do know is that I've been you before. Minus the news coverage, minus the bitter taste of murder on my mother's tongue, the day you laid Rogue Hill in Ferguson in front of the whole world awakened some dark moments in me. Moments of injustice I mummified in the tomb of my conscience. Injustice I promise to never let bitter my soul. Dear Mike Brown, your death got me thinking a lot. And I wonder if Fox News ever considers you human. Or did they purposely paint you beast in the minds of their viewers? Convince themselves every bullet that dove head first in your organs carried justice. Numbed America's conscience concerning you. I wonder if the weight of ignorant comments on social media collapsed your mother's lungs. Because, because it suffocated minds a few times. Like when someone wrote on my Instagram, quote, why does it always have to be about race? End quote. Could it be that we've experienced a different America than him? Mike, excuse him for his ignorance. Forgive your country for talking too apps and hard to do in your funeral. Forgive us for the loud Twitter wars we raged in your name during your wake. Rest in peace, be still in your grave. Don't let, the, don't let your skeleton roll over for these loose tongued and sensitive individuals like the pastor who wrote in the blog that you reap what you sowed. I wonder if mercy was anywhere in his mouth when he spoke of you. Did he think of his sons and how it could have been their body shadow boxing bullets on the other side of that gun? I wonder if your body expired immediately or with your eyes two shivery moons fighting the cold pitch black sky called death. I imagine your mother with eyes like morgues, hugging your breathless corpse tight, praying she could lazarus you with her love. A river of sorrow, water falling from her face, a hospice heart, dreading the day your bones become one with the soil, dear Mike Brown. That night in the alley, after the, after the cop released his cold grip of his cuffs from my innocent skin, I was a furnace ready to burn into a fist of fury. I felt fire ready to escape my rib cage, fueling with anger, but God, he quickly reminded me I must forgive because my transgressions was thrown into a sea deep as mercy. Though that cop's mouth was a barrel releasing rounds of hate, God still died for people like him. Then he showed me more than a racist but a citizen's birth in need of grace to parachute his falling soul from the never-ending pit of wrath. I pray when night fades from your mother's eyes and she's still mourning. In the morning, she finds grace in the sun to forgive Darren Wilson too. Dear Mike Brown, I don't know if you were a saint or a sinner, but I do know the God of justice, the one who breathes compassion like a sympathetic lung, a sovereign king who reigns on the just and unjust. I hope your soul met him before he whispered you into eternity, because I know you stood face to face before the God who make black lives matter, dear Mike Brown. I'm sorry your life ended a harsh, starless midnight, but I want you to know you still have a brother on earth. Morning.